everybody, welcome to chapter one, section three, transformations of, of absolute value functions. Here we're just going to go over absolute value functions, how are they transforming and writing new equations. So in example one, let g of x equal the two times the absolute value of x plus one. Identify the transformations from the parent function f of x equals the absolute value of x. So um, you'll have to refer back to um, the 1.2 videos. Uh, for the definitions, um, but anytime you multiply a number greater than one on the outside, it'll be a vertical stretch by a factor of whatever number that is. So in this one, I'm going to say it's a vertical stretch by a factor of two. Next, I need to identify what this plus one is doing. That plus one's on the inside of the absolute value bar, so it's inside the function. So that means it's either going to move left or right. So uh, plus goes to the left, minus goes to the right. So I'm going to say this goes left one unit. All right, so from this point, I like to always look at the graph to double check. So I'll go over here, and I'll pull up the picture of the graph. And if it's a vertical stretch, you should see it look a little bit skinnier than the original, which the blue graph does. And so... Next, I'm going to look to see if it moved left one, and it did. Look at the vertex, it moved left one. And so yeah, that's it. So the next problem, we're going to write a function whose graph h is a translation three units down from the graph g. So remember, we had g of x, and so if we're going to make it go three units down, um, you're just going to minus three on the outside. So you're going to say g of x equals two times the absolute value of x plus one, and then minus three. That's all there is to it, because that makes it go three units down. Um, type it into the graph to make sure it went three units down. So here we see the vertex went one, two, one, two, three units down. And that's all there is to that one. So the last one, write a function whose graph j is a translation two units to the left of graph h. Oh, right, so I was supposed to write this as h of x. My bad. Because um, we started with g, and we transformed g, so g turned into h. And, um, yeah, so we're going to look at the h of x function, and then we're going to translate it two units to the left. So two units to the left um, means I'm going to do what? Am I going to plus 2 or minus 2? Plus goes left and minus goes right. So I'm going to plus 2 on the inside. All right? So we already had a plus 1 on the inside. So j of x is going to be 2 times absolute value of x. And now it'll say plus 3 because I added 1 plus 2. And then minus 3. So then type this into the graph, and we should see it look 2 units to the left of the h of x graph. And so here was the h of x, one, two units to the left, just changing that plus one to plus three. So we're good. So example two, let g of x equal the absolute value of x plus three plus one. Identify the transformations from the parent function f of x equals the absolute value of x. So I have a plus three on the inside. So that's going to make it go left three units. And then I have a plus 1 on the outside, so that makes it go up or down, so that's going to go up one unit. Again, type it into the calculator to verify, but to save time, I'm just going to move on. Um, so what we have next is write a function whose graph h is a vertical stretch of the graph g by a factor of two. So if you're vertically, vertically stretching, you just throw a two on the outside. So h of x equals two times absolute value of x plus three plus one. That's it. Next, um, let me fix this. Okay, next, write a function whose graph j is a reflection in the y-axis y-axis means you're going to have a negative on the inside. So negative on the inside is going to look like j of x equals 2 times absolute value of negative x now plus 3 plus 1. And uh, yeah, make sure, I don't know, sometimes it might help 
to like bold your absolute value line so you're not thinking they're ones. But yeah, that's all there is to example two. Example three, let g of x equal the absolute value of x minus three minus five. Identify the transformations. If I have minus three on the inside, that means it's gonna go to the right three units. So right three, and then the minus five is gonna go down five units. And that's all there is for those transformations. Write a function whose graph H is a horizontal compression of the graph G by a factor of one third. So horizontal compression means I am going to uh, squish it from the sides. And anytime you have horizontal, you have to flip that number. All right, so um, flip this number. So that'll become a three. And so it means you're gonna plug a three on the inside. So it'll look like h of x equals absolute value of three times x minus three minus five. And that's all there is to that. So when you type that in, it'll look a little bit skinnier as if it's squishing from the sides, horizontally compressing. Um, write a function whose graph j is a reflection of the x-axis of the graph h. So x-axis reflection means a negative on the outside. And so I'm just going to say j of x equals negative absolute value. Everything else stays the same, 3x minus 3 minus 5. And that's it. Example 4. Let the graph G be a vertical compression by a factor of 0.25 followed by translation uh, three units up of the graph f of x equals absolute value of x. Write a rule for G. So vertical compression just means multiply on the outside. Translate three units up means add three units on the outside. So all you have to do, if it says write a rule for G, it just means write a function. So I'm going to multiply 0.25 on the outside, and then I have absolute value of x, and then I'm just going to, it said up 3, right? 3 units up. Yeah, so that's just plus 3. And that's, that's it. Uh, example 5, write a function g whose graph is a horizontal stretch of the graph f of x equals x by a factor of 3. So anytime you see horizontal, that means you're going to have to flip this number. All right, so flip. Um, all right, so I am going to do a one-third on the inside, and then said followed by a reflection on the y-axis. So I have g of x equals a y-axis reflection means a negative on the inside, and then flip the three to make one-third. So I have negative one-third x. And uh, yeah, that's it. That's it for these notes, pretty short notes. If you're one of my students, um, answer these exit quiz questions. If you're not one of my students, don't answer them. <laughs> and uh, thanks for watching. Bye.